talk about a really important topic today. Our discussion is going to be centered around this concept of men of quality and the fact that they do exist. Yes. Yes, yes they do. Absolutely. <laughs> And so I think it's going to be really fun to have this conversation and also to talk about some of the ways that women can prepare themselves to receive soulmate love. Um, before we really get into the main content, though, I would love it if the two of you would share a little bit more about yourselves personally, about your own journey to love and how you found each other, because I think you're a beautiful example of what we're saying is possible for women out there and then also just tell us a little bit more about how you found your way into doing this wonderful work that you do in the world mm, mm, love to talk about this yeah so uh if you had told me 20 years ago that i was going to be uh, coaching um uh, women to find their soulmate and that i was going to be doing it with my soulmate I would not have believed you because I was a chiropractor and that was my vision for my life to be a chiropractor. And, um, but finding my soulmates and really finding the man of my dreams, that was intentional. That was after a failed marriage um, and a serial monogamy and lots and lots of heartbreak and lots. I, I mean, I made every mistake in the book. So for those of you who are Me watching, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for those of you who are watching, yeah, if you've made mistakes, don't worry about it. You're in good company. <laughs> yeah. um, so my journey to finding Johnny was an intentional journey after all of that heartbreak and all of those mistakes. And I remember at one point after one particular, particularly painful breakup, I was you know how after breakup you just go get in your bed and you're in the fetal position and you're just crying your eyes out? That was where I was at. And I made this really, really powerful decision at the time. I was in so much pain that I was going to find my soulmate or I was either going to find my soulmate or I was going to be, you know, a cat lady. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like the cat lady who just has the cats and loves on her cats and is just going to be content with that. Because there's like a spectrum there. So there's the soulmate, right? And then there's cat lady. And they're in between, I had already experienced all that in between. So I was going to go to one, one end or the other of that spectrum. And I was really, really intentional from that point on. I got myself some support. I got a coach, a love coach. And I dedicated myself to really excavating and doing the inner work for myself to find out about my beliefs and behaviors around men and around my beliefs and behaviors about myself and my beliefs and behaviors around relationships in general and really looking at that and with the help of my love coach and with a commitment to the inner work, to that, that spiritual and personal uh, development work um, with a focus, not just general, that's great, you know, general personal development, that's really good, but it was personal development that is focused, really clearly focused um, around finding, first of all, becoming my own soulmate, like falling in love with myself, and then falling in love with my life, and then from that point, falling in love with my soulmate, finding my Mr. Right. And so that was a, that's a, that's a kind of trajectory that I was on very intentional. And within just a few years of doing that, doing that work, um, I manifested Johnny and we fell madly in love and here we are <laughs> 16 years later or over 16 years later at this point. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and sometimes people ask like, well, what, but how exactly did you meet? And, and the short answer was we met online match.com. Uh, but there was something special about Laura that drew me in. And, and that's the, the work that we do with our clients is to, to put yourself in such an energetic vibration, but also have such an understanding uh, of who you are. And like Laura said, loving yourself, loving your life so that your actions don't reveal your old stuff because a lot of people a lot of people online they meet online they meet in person their action like in their head and in their heart they're ready for love but no they're not really ready for love and their actions their behaviors uh, are evidence of oh you haven't gotten over your stuff 
And so why would I want to walk into uh, a relationship with someone who's not really ready for that? Um, for, who's not really ready for a real relationship? You're still banging the drum about how wrong the past guys were and stuff like that, you know? Um, so Laura's like drawing in power was so powerful. She didn't have a picture. I, I was falling in love with her. I didn't even know what she looked like. We were talking on the phone. I didn't know what she looked like. And, uh, and so that's the power of the, the stuff that we do. And, um, and at this point now, this is our, our, we're, we're into our 12th year of, of working with women and doing this. And, uh, and this is what we see is that. Um, when you do this, when you take that intentional journey, when you allow yourself to recognize that you've got a lot of good stuff going on in your life, but you know, this area of your life isn't going the way you want it to. Uh, and you say, Hey, I could use a little help here. Use a little help here. And then you actually do something with that. Uh, things can really change because just a small change can have you end up in a totally different place. Like if you're here and if you go like this way, but look, if you just change that way, you end up in a totally different place. And so that's why these, these small shifts with intentionality and commitment really can make a big, uh, a big difference. And um, uh, so my, my journey was not quite as intentional. Uh, and this is, we can talk later about why that would like the, the feminine power versus the masculine power. Um, and so mine wasn't quite that intentional, but I moved from New York to California because I knew that it was time for me to make a change in my life. I was divorced. I had uh, relationships that didn't work out. And I realized, hey, I'm always at the scene of the crime. Not an actual crime. But, uh, I'm always at the scene of the crime. I'm always there. So maybe this has something to do with me. That's like a big light bulb moment. Maybe this has something to do with me. And, um, and yes, I was with the wrong person. And yes, you've been with the wrong guys. And yes, they've done bad things. But if you're always at the scene of the crime, maybe it has something to do with you. And that was a realization that I had. And so moving out to California was part of my um, really just look, looking at myself. Again, not quite as intentional and with as much focus as, as Laura did, but definitely just looking at myself and then being open to, um, to you know, what she was, wh who she was and what she was about. Um, and what was the other question you asked, like how we got started or something? Uh, yeah, so after this wonderful event of the two of you meeting and finding each other, how did you come to do the work you now do in the world? So how did Laura go from being a chiropractor and Johnny, I believe you were practicing law or doing something with your law degree at that time, maybe? Yeah. No, I was actually teaching. Uh, I left the law long before. So uh, I was actually using law to create curriculum for students. I did it in New York uh, for a, uh, a, a school and I created the academic curriculum that was the centerpiece of the school. And then I came out to California and basically did the same thing. I was director of leadership development at a, at a leadership high school. And um, so I was used to creating curriculum. Uh, and that's relevant just because what was happening was Laura's a chiropractor. And so she was creating a wellness practice, a full wellness practice. And I was in the office helping her out. And, and basically I left teaching to work with her because I was like, I'm in love with this woman and I want to be with her all the time. And uh, she was starting a new practice and we, we, our daughter was just born and it was like, and she was like, Hey, could use a little help here. And I was like, great. I get to be around you more. That's awesome. So, um, so anyway, so we're in the office and, and the practice is growing and doing really well. And Laura's an amazing uh, practitioner, very caring and really gave people great results or patients, great results. But what was happening was, the, the patients who were mostly women started asking her like, um, Hey, you're together with this guy all the time. And you talk about him so great. And you're so clearly so in love. Like, how did you find this guy? And, uh, or versions like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she said, well, I was very conscious and intentional about attracting the right man for me. He's my soulmate. And their heads would tilt and they'd say, really tell me about that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and she would, and then she'd go, okay, let's go back to your chiropractic care. And then the next time in, they'd say, tell me more about that. And then she'd tell them more and then, okay, let's go back to your chiropractic care. Well, this went on and on and on. And then she had girlfriends of hers who would ask her a, the same question, but they're their friends. One woman even uh, invited herself over to dinner and then brought a notebook and put it on the, the dinner table 
and started taking notes of what Laura was saying. And we're like, are we having dinner or just like a class going on here? And um, so anyway, so she, by the way, met her, her soulmate and they're still together today and they got two kids and stuff like that. So I started to wonder, I put my teaching hat on and I started to wonder like, is this just like Laura's little special magical journey or is this uh, something that other people have done. And so I started to research and talk to other couples and just read about other couples. And, and when someone, especially when someone didn't just like lock into it at age 18, you know, but when they, they like were intentional about it, what did they do? And, and what I realized uh, was that there was actually a, a path that they took. Uh, and we kind of uh, spoke to it there, fall in love with yourself, fall in love with your life, find the right man to fall in love with you. Uh, and, and change your beliefs and behaviors around yourself, about men, about relationships. There's a path that they took, sometimes intentional, and sometimes people just lucked into it. Those people were more rare, but uh, sometimes they just lucked into it. But mostly it was an intentional thing, even if they didn't have like a love coach or mentor or something like that. And so um, with so many questions coming to Laura, and I was kind of getting a little antsy sitting behind a desk. I'd always been creating curriculum and teaching and stuff like that. We said, why don't we just do a little workshop here in the chiropractic office? Just move the tables and everything aside and just have a little workshop. We only got like 12 chairs, but, you know, that's what we'll do. So we made a little flyer. You know, we're going to have a workshop about love, essentially, so you can stop asking questions and focus on your chiropractic care. And there was more than 12 people. And they were like, I'll just stand. And we're like, we don't even have a seat for you. And they're like, I'll just stand. And so then they were standing and then we said, you know, in a few months, we'll do a, maybe a longer one. It was a three day thing. They loved it. They were like, I've never heard this before. And I've never actually heard from a man and a woman. And I never heard the male point of view and all this stuff. And I said, you know, in a few months, we'll do like a, maybe a longer one. And they're like a few months. What? We want this now. And anyway, long story short, they, we did a full day uh, within a week of that evening workshop. And then it was just more and more people wanted more stuff. And, and uh, I love creating curriculum. I love teaching. Uh, I love just when Laura gets enthusiastic about something, um, you know, she's like, this is great. Every, every woman should know this. And uh, so we just started doing that. And for like a crazy year and a half, we had the chiropractic office and then we were doing full on weekend workshops. And, um, and then Laura retired from chiropractic and then we just dedicated ourselves uh, fully to this. And I continued doing research and creating a curriculum for the path that basically Laura did. But now at this point, it's lots of other women have done it. There's, you know, clients of ours who same thing, married, babies, all that good stuff. Um, and they started out right where Laura was and right where you may be right now. Like they thought, maybe I don't have what it takes. Like maybe I'm just something's wrong with me and I just don't have what it takes to be in a long-term relationship because I keep having these, you know, messed up relationships. Or maybe like my picker is off, you know, the guys who I pick are just wrong and my picker is like permanently broken. Or, you know, maybe all the guys out there are just knuckleheads and all the good ones are already taken and uh, stuff like that. And we really uh, help women basically get their power back to like, nah, it's none of those things. You can actually, it is all those things, but you can actually change that. So. Yeah, so I thank you both for sharing that. I just want to reemphasize and piggyback into a couple of things that you, you both said there that really stood out for me. One was, Laura, when you said that you created an intentional path mm -hmm. to attracting soulmate love, that really resonated with me because I also did the same thing in my own life to attract my own husband. But I think for a lot of women, excuse me, when they hear the word intentional, it feels a little scary to them because they sometimes equate that with like desperate. And there's a huge distinction, of course. And um, so I just wanted to mention that because Johnny and Laura are going to share some of the things that you can do that are intentional because we all believe, I know we share this belief that you can be doing a lot of the right things on the outside, but if you don't have some of the things inside resolved and handled, or at least on the way to being handled, if you're not in that place of growth and self-awareness, that can block all of the things that you're doing on the right, on the outside, and you can self-sabotage in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that just stood out for me. 
And then um, I wanted to also just say that um, as you listen to what Johnny and Lara say, um, they are not only a living, breathing example of what's possible, but what Johnny said is so true when he said that it's not like you're out there doing everything wrong, but uh, so much of the, er the area that we work in is an area of what I like to call nuance. There are small little things that you can shift, whether it be a belief or whether it be a way of showing up or whether it be an action or whether it is creating an intentional plan that inspires you. There are so many little things that you can do that these minor shifts can literally transform what is possible in your love life. So I love that you brought that out, Johnny, and gave the example of, you know, if you just shift like this far, <laughs> I'm not doing the finger thing very well, but you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can make a huge difference on your trajectory and can really propel you forward. And because we are all wanting to share this message of hope, I just wanted to reemphasize those points. Yeah, it, it's so important to to remember that, um, like, the, the thing that I said, there are some people that just luck into it. They're 20 years old. They meet somebody fabulous, and that's great. But, like, that's kind of like some people get rich by playing the lottery or, or winning a lot of money in Vegas. Like, that's true. Some people do. But do we really want that to be, like, our financial plan? You know, like, what's your plan for your future? I'm going to go to Vegas every weekend and, and play the slots and, you know, hope that I get lucky. This is an area that uh, research shows is the number one determinant of your happiness in your entire life is your primary romantic relationship. How much money you make, where you live, uh, even your health is secondary to your primary romantic relationship. So this is the area that deserves the most attention, the most investment of time, energy, resources, because if your goal in life is to be happy and feel fulfilled, this is the leverage point. Be with the right person and, you know, the economy goes up and down, the, the, your business goes up and down, your health goes up and down, whatever. We all have real challenges in life. But when you're with the right person, you know, the highs are a little higher and the lows have like a little cushion. And the research bears this out. This isn't just an opinion thing. The number one determinant of people's happiness or not happiness in life is their, their relationship. And so the, you talked about like this feeling of feeling desperate. It's actually the opposite. It's just being smart. Yeah. It's just being smart. It's just like we said, your car will work better if you change the oil every 3,000 miles. You're not desperate to have the best car in the world. You're just smart to change the oil every 3,000 miles if that's what the experts recommend so that the thing will work right. Well, if you want your life to work right, this is the area to change the oil, upgrade the oil, whatever the thing is, because uh, whatever is going on in your past, that can be changed. And a lot of times people come to us, they say, I've made a lot of mistakes. I, I think it may be too late for me. You know, like I want to have a family. Maybe it's too late to have a biological family. Or maybe it's just too late because I've just screwed up so much. And the, the evidence is the contrary. Once you take this area of your life seriously, once you up your investment of time, energy, and resources in it, you can change your past experiences into just a past experience and not the determinant of your future, but the time to do something about it is now. You can make this year the year that you get so much more serious about your love life in a powerful way, not in a desperate way, in a smart way. Like, hey, I'm gonna do the things that work because you know I want it to work for me. I want my car to run. I want my life to work in a way. And this is the big leverage point for your happiness and fulfillment in life is your love life. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And that felt very inspiring as you were, you were sharing that, Johnny. And I'm sure that it will for so many of the women that are listening. I want to acknowledge, though, those women that may have their inner cynic screaming in their heads right now, because I know I've been there, Laura, I know you've been there. And I know we talk to women that are 
feeling discouraged. There can be a perception that I've tried everything, um, or some of the beliefs you mentioned, Johnny, that might be coming up, or there are no good men out there in my city, state, town, country. I know we've all talked to women, no matter where they live, that have that belief system going on. So I wonder if we can just ask you to address a little bit of this inner cynic, uh, inner cynic voice that may be going on, because I really do want to support women to getting uh, along that path to possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this question. I think this is a, this is, um, yeah, this is how I felt too. I definitely, there was times when, you know, I'd get together with my girl, my other single girlfriends, and we'd go out to dinner, and we'd get a glass of wine, and we'd start complaining about and complaining with evidence, like to, uh, we had evidence that we were right, complaining that there just weren't enough good men left in our area, in our city. And um, in, the, in the Bay Area. We live in the Bay Area. And, you know, we had this very, very strong belief with evidence that there's just not enough single heterosexual men who are emotionally available and ready for commitment. That was, we had all this evidence to support it. We were definitely collecting evidence to support it mm -hmm. by getting together and talking about it. And, you know, um, and that was coming from a good place because there's something about women to getting together and, you know, so you, we want to commiserate a little bit and vent a little bit and uh, the latest breakup and, oh, he did this and he didn't call. What does it mean that he didn't call? Or he called and he left this quick message. What does that mean? So we were trying to, you know, analyze all these things. And so I, I, I remember those days. I remember feeling cynical. And I remember also. And, and by the way, it doesn't feel cynical. Right. Yeah, at the like moment, it felt real. Right. right, it felt like I'm being real. Yeah. I'm being real. This is the reality of my situation. There's just not enough good men left in my area. And there's just not enough good quality men left in the world. There's just, they're all taken or they just don't exist anymore. They're not raised anymore. Um, <clears throat> but I remember at one, one point, one dinner that I had with a dear girlfriend who was single, and we were doing the inner work. We were just starting to do the inner work together. Um, to support, we were supporting each other and in, in, in doing this um, shift in our beliefs and behaviors around around men and relationships. And I started in on my old line of talking about there's just not enough men and uh, not enough good men. And she said, she stopped me very lovingly but very firmly. Um, and she said, you know, Laura, I think that um, what I'm learning is that we create our reality by what we talk about and what we focus on. And, you know, I was like, you know, you're right. I know that. I know that. Like, this is what I've been taught, right? Um, and she said, so let's, why don't we focus on what we want instead of what we don't want? Mm -hmm. And that shift in our conversation helped us both move forward in a powerful way, along with the support and the guidance of, she had a love coach as well. Along with that support, we were able to start to shift our conversations because our conversations were creating our reality. It just kept feeding into a reality of there's just not enough good men. There's just not enough good men. There's, they don't make them anymore that way, that kind of thing. And, and that I was out there. And, and you yeah. were out there. Yeah. And, and her husband, her future husband was out there. And we met, I met Johnny, and she met her now husband uh, within a month of each other. I met Johnny, and then a month later she met her husband, and they've been together, and they have two amazing daughters, and we're friends with them and, and stuff like that. So um, to speak to that cynical voice that feels like reality, why don't you, you who are listening, you're looking at that as your reality. That's the way it has been. But you know what? The point of power is in the present moment. And your present moment is right now and right here. And you're, you're here. You're, you know, you're watching all these experts. You're learning from Michelle and all the amazing experts that she's brought on. Um, and so now you can shift. This is the new year. Take the energy of this new year and shift. Just be willing to shift. And again, like Johnny was saying, it's just a tiny shift. It doesn't have to be a huge one. It's just a tiny shift. Your perceptions 
about where whether or not there's good men, enough good men around. And the, the truth is you only need one. You only need one good man. And I'm going to tell you, and this is what Johnny and I teach in our, um, like we have a video series we'll talk about later, but we, we teach this, that there is, there is plenty of good men to, to, to go around. We have proof. Okay. We know a lot of them. And Michelle, I know, you know, a lot of them and you have a lot of good quality men as your husband and then also the people in your circle. So we know there's a lot of good quality men around. We have proof. And so if you're just willing, you who are watching this, if you're just willing to take the energy of all these experts that Michelle has compiled together here to help you and take the energy of the new year, you can shift your perception and just be willing to have us be right on this. Just be willing to say, you know, Lara and Johnny, okay, Michelle, you guys say that there's, there's these good men around. I'm going to choose to believe you instead of the voice in my head. And even if it, you keep, even if you kind of stumble in that, I'm going to tell you that can be a major powerful shift in how this year plays out. Mm -hmm. Because what, what we want this year for you is probably what you want, which is you want to make this uh, a life changing year. Um, I doubt that you're showing up here to this wonderful uh, video tell summit and thinking, oh, I'll just do more of the same, more of the same. I hope you're not doing that. I hope you're really looking for uh, a way forward, you know, and, and that way forward is like we've talked about in that moment when you decide that, uh, because like when we talk about wh whether there are good men out there, uh, I want to, I want to, first of all, agree with you. There are a lot of knuckleheads. There are a lot of knuckleheads. Yeah. And let's say that your, your whole life is, is a room full of 20 single guys, right? That's all the, the single guys in your life. 15 of them are knuckleheads, not emotionally mature, players, uh, you know, not like grown men, you know, boys that they're like playing and looking for mommy and stuff like that. So 15 of them are just knuckleheads <laughs> in some way, shape or form. You know what I mean? You, you know, ladies, right? You know what I'm talking about. That's why mommy right? gets just, yeah. Yeah. Right? Which is why Laura and I are both laughing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Knuckleheads is probably a very kind term. <laughs> yes. So, so, 15 out of 20 are that. Three of them are good guys. Maybe a good guy for you, maybe not. But they're good guys. And two of them are amazing. Absolutely amazing. What are you going to see? Who are you going to be attracted to? And who's going to be attracted to you? That's all on you. Because the evidence is Absolutely, factually, nobody can argue. Most of the guys here are knuckleheads. Nobody would argue with that. <laughs> Three of them are only okay, right? Or okay, maybe, I don't know. But two, small percentage, two. That's twice as many husbands as you're looking for. <laughs> so there's an abundance, right? <laughs> you know? And so, so Not that's... only is he handsome and amazing, <laughs> but he's really funny. <laughs> So, <laughs> so this, so this, this idea of, of taking back your power is, is, uh, can be life changing. And the key is to make it this year, like right now, this first quarter of the year, this is the, the ending of, of winter and the beginning of spring. Perfect time to not only set new intentions, but put yourself on a path for something else. Put yourself on a path for, for a change. Because if you would have known what to do, you would have done it at the end of 2015, going into 16. You would have done it at the end of 2014, going into 15. If you would have known what to do, that doesn't make you bad. That just makes you like, oh, okay, this is an area that I haven't focused on. And uh, there may be some things out there that I don't know. Like I had a, a shoulder injury from playing racquetball and I swore it was one problem with the shoulder. I swore it was getting more and more painful. It was just like it stopped me from playing racquetball. I swore that this was the problem. I go to a doctor, I get an MRI, I get an exam. They're asking me to do things that I never did. And they're like, oh no, it's not that at all. It's this other thing. I was like, who knew? I didn't know. Well, you know what? 
in reality. And so now and then I rehab, then I did different things specifically because that particular doctor and the specialist that were brought in to help me knew more about my shoulder. It's my shoulder. They knew more about my shoulder than I did. Mm -hmm. The same thing is happening in your love life. You're doing things that you're completely unaware of that are totally tanking your possibility of finding love. You just don't know what it is. It's your life. Nobody's arguing with it. Nobody's saying you have to be somebody different, right? I didn't have to go get a new shoulder. But there's some things that you're doing that are tanking the possibility that you will ever find love. So why not go to the specialist to find out what am I doing that I'm unaware of, you know, uh, because that doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you a human being. And we all have the areas of our life where we're just like, well, I'm not getting the results that I want. Uh, and, and so, you know, and, and one of them we've already talked about quite a bit is the belief that there's no good men out there. But when you look at that example I gave you of the 20 men, there's two in that room of 20, twice as many as you, as you know. So let's start focusing there. And also just that there's experts that know more. Like I went to the doctor, they know more about my shoulder and my life than I did. So go to the experts and, and be able to be coachable, you know, like don't be so wedded to being right about how there's not enough good men in the Bay Area. We work with a lot of women from all over the world, but we have a lot in like in the Bay Area, in LA, in San Diego, in Orange County, in, 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 and in each of those areas, there are specific things that, that the women there say that are factually true, but not the whole truth. It's true that if you're in an area with a high percentage of gay men, for example, that there's less straight men available. That's true. But again, out of those 15 guys, some of them, they're not just, they're not knuckleheads. They're just gay. So are, what are you focusing on? So that's really the thing to be looking at is how can I take my power back and how can I just do the like, hey, little help here, and then follow the guidance of the experts that you're saying, hey, I'd love for you to help. So whoever you connect with, uh, see what you can learn from them because chances are the road that you want to travel they have already helped people travel. Like at this point, we've worked with thousands of women from all walks of life, all over the world, you know, in their late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, our oldest client was 76. So whatever is going on, women who are, had uh, abuse, divorce, just, you know, not dated, all kinds of things. Um, and the chances are the problem or issue that you're dealing with, uh, someone here has dealt with. And that is a benefit to you. Uh, And the other idea is like change the idea that you have to change like who you are in order to find a man. That's completely disempowering. Um, And I have a personal like uh, a personal drive to help women make better decisions in their life because I know from my personal life the implications across the board when a woman is not in her power and makes decisions from a place of weakness, from a place of, well, this is what I can get. Because when I was growing up, my, my, uh, my mother, who I, I love, and I am so grateful for everything she uh, did for us growing up, but her choices in men were not good. So when my mother and father uh, divorced, she um, attracted and was attracted to my stepfather, who was abusive. So I grew up in a a family of domestic violence. And and so, you know, whether it's standing out in the cold all night or going to the emergency room, I knew the, the impact of when a woman, good heart, meaning well, just makes really bad choices and then continues making those really bad choices. It affects the kids. It affects people around you. Um, and so I want you to make better choices. That's my commitment to you from a personal level. And then now, because we've seen the impact that it can have, it's so beautiful to see. But I know that, that no matter what bad choices you've made in the past, you can make better choices. You just need to know how. And that's what, we're, that's what we help people with. That's what Michelle helps you with. That's what probably every expert here can help you with. And you want to actually see... How can I make better choices? What are the things that I'm doing unconsciously that are tanking my uh, possibility of ever finding love? And get curious. 
because it's great news that that there's some stuff that you don't know because now there's room for improvement, right? Well, yeah, and it's so empowering too because when you recognize that it's not just all in the hands of fate or it's just not all the fault of your stars not lining up quite right, um, it's a really empowering thing to know that there are conscious, intentional actions that you can take to create that possibility in your life. And I think your shoulder example is a perfect example because I think we all have blind spots in our lives. We look at ourselves every day in the mirror. We look at ourselves um, figuratively every day and we think we see everything, but we don't. Mm -hmm. And I know for myself, I had to get some support in order to move through some of the things that had been blocking me and I had been self-sabotaging my own love life for years shooting myself in the foot so many times it's a wonder I can walk and <laughs> I, I didn't see it though I didn't see the self-sabotaging beliefs that Laura was talking about or the behaviors I didn't see those things until I got that support and then like you talked about with just some small changes and some small tweaks um, some of this being seeming very nuanced, it made a huge difference in what was possible for me. So I just want to ec echo what you're saying there. And I know our time's going quickly, but I want to I want to also have you. You've spoken a little bit um, here about a woman owning her own power, and I'm I'm really um, passionate about um, a saying I echo what you've just talked about, but I also want to have you talk to a little bit about the other couple of things that we shared in your introduction that you said uh, make soulmate love a woman's destiny. So the next one I think is speaking her truth. So what do you mean by that and why is that so important? So to make, first of all, I just want to say that Everything that we teach in all of our video series that we offer in our telecourses and our workshops and our programs that we offer women, because we work ex extensively with women, exclusively with women, everything that we teach is based on some foundational principles. And these are spiritual, these are universal spiritual principles. So they're not religious, um, but they're universal spiritual principles. They're based on principles that um, all spiritual beliefs, uh, all philosophies can basically support. And one of them is uh, we believe that we live in a, a benevolent universe, um, that there is a higher power, and you can call that higher power whatever you'd like. We honor that. We honor all paths to that higher power. Um, and we believe that that higher power loves us mm -hmm. and wants the best for us. And um, I think having that, I get tears in my eyes thinking about it because – um, I think that if you know that you have that higher power that loves you and wants the best for you, if you really can own that and accept that, um, you know, again, you don't have to be religious about it, but if you can own that, then I think that from that place, you can believe that there's something more for you and that you can believe that, that soulmate love Really, soulmate love is your birthright. And that's another foundational principle that we all have this birthright that has been given to us, that we are deserving of love. No matter how many mistakes and how many screw-ups we have done, we are deserving of love. And so that, so what that means is soulmate love is your birthright. It's there for you. But like any birthright, you can only get it if you claim it. Right? It's there for you. It's out there. It's, you know, the universe has given that birthright to you, but you need to know how to get it, how to take it. And if you know that, that heart, your higher power loves you and you know that there is a, um, that it's your birthright and that you are willing to do whatever it takes to claim that birthright, that it can be yours. But you have to understand that soulmate love may be your birthright, but it's not necessarily your destiny because your birthright and your destiny are two totally different things. Your birthright is there for you, holding it out on this, like it's a silver platter for you to take. And your destiny is about the actions that it takes to, to make it, 
to make that birthright yours, to take it in for you. And so when we talk about standing in your power and speaking your truth, to me, speaking your truth is, is allowing yourself to believe that there is a higher power and that there is more for you in this life and that you are going to go for it. You're going to go for it. Like you go, like most of you who are watching, I'm sure at one point you have a career or a business um, and you have, you're going for it in some way. So with that kind of, and you put attention, maybe you've gone to college. So you've gone for it, right? To get that degree, you went for it and you made it a high priority. You didn't just show up at college and expect the thing, the degree to fall on your lap. You showed up. And so owning your truth, Claiming your power is about continuing to go for it. So even if you fail the tests in the past, well, you get help from your professor or a tutor. So consider us your professors. Consider us your tutors in this, this uh, Love 101, 201, 301, in this course, in this journey of University of Love. Consider us that and go for it. Like have that energy. It's a fresh new year. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to make it a high priority for me in my life. And that's speaking truth. That, to me, that's how it's speaking truth. You may have something to add yeah, to that. I think it's very powerful. Yeah, and speaking your truth about what you really want. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't speak our truth about what we want because we're afraid we can't get it. Right. Right? Yes. And so, uh, so do something about that. The fear that you can't have it, set yourself up to win instead of setting yourself up to have more of the same. And so speaking the truth about what's important to you. Do you want to have a family? Be honest about that. Mm -hmm. Now, how you do that in the context of the relationship exploration dance and dating, how you do that, certainly there are some nuances that you're going to want to learn about so that you don't, you know, meeting some guy and be like, hello, and I'm looking to get married and have a family and, you know, stuff like that. And here's my soulmate list and, you know, things like that. So there are things not to do uh, around that, but speaking your truth to yourself and to those close to you who will be supportive of you uh, is critical. Like all of our programs, every there's always a, a community component uh, because we're social beings as human beings. And I don't want to get too wonky about the educational uh, reasons behind it, but we learn better in community because we're hardwired to value community. Women especially learn better in community. And the way schooling is set up is like, you know, don't look at your neighbor's paper, do this on your own. It's completely anti-feminine, anti-collaborative. And the way we teach is designed for uh, the way women's brains works, the way we human beings work, which is I like collaboration. I actually like being in community. You know, I like connecting with others and I learn from others. Um, and so, you know, if you don't have uh, a community of people who will be like, that's awesome. You're going to go for that. I'm totally in your corner. Well, then, you know, maybe time to, to find a new community uh, that will be supportive and uplifting and like, go for it, go for your dreams. Um, because then things will start to unfold for you. You'll start to see the action of one of those foundational principles that Laura mentioned. We live in a loving and benevolent universe. And so if you wanted to be an astronaut uh, and you didn't think it was possible, then you wouldn't notice the astronaut that lives in your neighborhood who could help you. You wouldn't notice a course on how to be an astronaut because you're not looking for that because you don't think it's possible, right? So going back to my shoulder thing, I just was suffering with the shoulder pain and beating myself up about why can't I just like push through it and make it happen and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and so I was beating myself up because it was stuff I didn't know, Right. And so that's where you want to recognize there may be some stuff I don't know. And if I'm around people that are like, oh, no, that's just going to be like that forever. Well, shoot, maybe I need to be around some new people because whatever it is that's going on can be changed. Now, can I become an NBA basketball player? No, I'm 51 years old. I'm not seven feet. I'm not going to be an NBA basketball player. So there are some limitations of matter. Uh, but can you find love in your life? Absolutely. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what you've experienced in the past. And you don't have to make it harder on yourself by trying to do it all alone. Like maybe if I went on YouTube, I could probably have found some stuff about my shoulder, but that would have taken a ton of time, would have been nerve wracking because I wouldn't really be sure if I was doing the right thing or making it worse. Um, and I wouldn't have anybody there to give me specific 
guidance about my particular situation. And so I finally, after going around and around and around and around, went to an expert and, and did that. So that's where like speaking your truth really comes into play, where you're actually saying what you want. And if you feel shaky about wanting it because you don't feel like you can get it, do something about that so that you can actually make it more likely to happen than less. Yeah, I think there is real power in speaking out loud what it is that you most deeply desire in your life, and particularly in this area of love, and then being open to receive the abundance of the universe that is available to us that Laura was speaking about, and trusting that there is a reason that that deep desire is in your heart, Yes. And, and I, I can jump in here just for a minute. Desire uh, means of the, the Father, meaning of spirit, of God, of the universe. Of, so that's why we have that desire. Like, I don't have a desire to be a race car driver. That's just not in my heart. But I did have a desire to be a husband, a father, uh, things like that. So that was in me. And then it's up to me to bring it out. So if you have a desire to, to be with your soulmate, that's placed in you and it's up to you to do something with that, but it's already there. You just got to bring it out. Yeah. I believe it's placed there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe it's just to torment us through our entire lives. Yeah. And yeah. That's why I think the principles we've been talking about are so powerful. Um, owning your power, speaking your truth and having healthy beliefs centered around relationships. And then if you can do that in a supportive environment, in community and with mentorship, it can make you, um, get, it can open up the possibility for you to move through whatever blocks or obstacles or challenges or limiting beliefs or things that you've been doing without even realizing to self-sabotage your love life. It can help remove those things and get them out of the way so that you can have the kind of love that you deeply desire in your in your heart. And I believe that is a really important self-honoring way to live. I believe that that's something that all women should honor if they have that desire in their heart. Um, and I've, you know, I've, I'm sure you've heard this before, um, but I think it's really important to be in touch with and honor what you deeply want and understand the reasons why that's so important to you. Because a lot of times they say, if the why is strong enough, the how will show up, mm -hmm. but you have to be willing to engage in the how. And that's where this whole um, piece comes in, in getting support or mentorship in whatever way makes sense for you. Comes Absolutely. In. Absolutely. And the thing to know is that, Nothing is going to change in your life if you're comfortable. So it's going to be a little uncomfortable. It doesn't have to be painful. You don't have to suffer or anything like that. But it's going to be a little uncomfortable while you, you work for change in your love life. So just be willing to have it a little bit, uh, be a little bit uncomfortable, um, but you'll grow through it. Yeah. Yeah. Any type of growth is it creates a little bit of discomfort mm -hmm. while we're in the, we, we call them growing pains, right? For yes. Right. Right. Yeah. And that, and then like the beliefs about, uh, about relationships and about men and stuff like that are important. Like one of the basic ones to, to shift, there's different levels of changing your beliefs about relationships. Like there are some people that believe that nobody has soulmate love, like it's all BS and they're not really that in love and stuff like that. Well, that's a place to shift and change. Like some people do have soulmate love. And then another level is like some people have great relationships. I could have a great relationship. You may not believe that you will, but just that you could, just that it's in the realm of possibility that you could. That right there is a, a, a shift that you can decide to take on right now. And, and, uh, and I know we're wrapping up, but I just want to encourage you to take the time uh, to write out, why is this year going to be your year? Why are you so committed for 2017 to be your year for love. Because when you do that, you then open your eyes to see what's available to help you move forward. That could be a conversation, that could be a course, that could be a program, that could be any, any number of things that will help you move forward. And then don't look to do the least you can do. It's like getting in shape. 
Like, I wish I could just sit on the couch and watch basketball and then get in great shape. And I've been trying that for years and it doesn't work. So you've got to, you know, realize like the least thing I could do is probably going to keep you as close to where you are right now as, you know, like closer to where you are right now. So look for what's the most I could do, you know? Like what, what is the, the biggest thing that the gold platinum level commitment of time, energy, and resources so that I can move forward. If you really want to make this your year for love, if you're fine with the trajectory of I'll do a little step and then, you know, a little step. And then 10 years later, I'll have a breakthrough. If that's, if you're fine with that time frame, then don't try to do the most you could do. But if you really want to make this your year for love, look at why you want to make this year for your year for love and then look for ways to like move yourself forward. Even if like Laura said, and like you said, Michelle, even if it's a little uncomfortable, doesn't have to be painful, but a little uncomfortable. And on the other side of that is amazing breakthroughs and amazing uh, recovery and an amazing new life. Like you really don't have to be, this could be the last January that you start your new year as a single person. Mm -hmm. It could be. But it's not going to be like by landing from falling out the sky. You're going to have to do something to go for it. I want to thank you both for generously sharing and for being here with me today. You're like such lovely people and very dear to me. And I just love you both and feel so blessed that you're back with me again. And um, I would love to let you just have a chance to just each share a brief uh, parting thought or a little piece of wisdom before we wrap up today. Great. Wonderful. Well, <clears throat> what I want to say is if you who are watching this, if you are number one, still breathing and I think you are. And if you still have, even if it's a small little hope or a little dream in your heart for soulmate love, for finding your Mr. Right, if you have that within you, then it is there for you. It is. It's just a matter of, of you really doing the preparatory work to be able to accept it. And it doesn't have to be a huge shift, a huge change. It doesn't have to be this big thing. It can actually be these small little shifts. It may be a little bit uncomfortable, but it's possible for you because if, if you're still breathing, there's somebody out there for you. If you're still wanting it, if you still have that desire in your, your heart, I promise you, from my heart to yours, that there is somebody out there for you if you still want it. Yeah, and, um, you know, I want to say that um, when Laura was doing, oh, you know, I mentioned about the Man of Quality videos. Uh, if you've seen them in the past, you haven't seen these because they're new and improved this year. We've actually added some stuff, and it's really cool. But um, when Laura was doing the inner work to attract me and to draw me in, um, I was out there, right? It, it's not like I was living on another planet or unborn or something like that. <laughs> I was out there and I was looking for her. Now, I might not have been, as I said, as intentional as her, but I was looking for her, not her only younger, not her only 10 pounds lighter, not her only blah, blah, blah. I was looking for her. And so what I want to leave you with is your guy is out there. And when you go to sleep at night and you think about you, you really want to be a happy and fulfilled, not that you're not happy and fulfilled now. I, I, I just want to get that. It, happy and fulfilled in a different way. A happy and fulfilled partner or wife in a relationship. And when you go to sleep, like wishing that that was the case, instead of going to bed alone and waking up alone, he's going to bed the same way. That's the thing that you really got to get. He's saying, oh, I wish... I could meet this woman who, and then he'll describe you. Not you 10 years younger, not you 10 pounds lighter. He's going to describe you and he's going to talk to his guy friends. You'll hear me talk about this in the video. He'll talk to his guy friends about you, but he doesn't know it's you. So each of us has our role and, and your role right now is to help you guys get together because you'll be happier. He'll be happier. And the world would be a better place if people were in love and, and you know, not uh, the opposite. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. 
Right. Well, thank you so much to both of you. I really appreciate it. And I also want to acknowledge and appreciate all of you out there, all of the women that are participating in this series, because this is a compliment to you that you are dedicated to your own self-growth and development and that you are honoring that deep desire that has been in your heart for soulmate love. I hope you'll join us for more of the series. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.